This time on Flipping Bangers. We've got a definite plan. We're looking for an Eastern Bloc car, yeah? Yes, definitely are. The only issue seem to be... It's, it's well, not it's... running very well, I have to say. And it has marks on the paint. It's made a real mess, taking a lot of cleaning off. Plus an interior that smells. Oh. It's perfect. This is our dream car. I'm Gus Gregory. And I'm Will Trickett. Together, we're risking everything to follow a dream. It's something I've wanted to do for a long, long time. We've packed in our day jobs. And invested our own hard-earned cash. As we try to make a living in the cutthroat world of second-hand cars. It's all in the chase. You've got to buy well, you've got to sell well. Why would anybody buy this car? We've got a goal. We want to double our money. If we put 500 quid in, we need to see £1,000 back. We're targeting the very bottom of the market. We buy cars that nobody else wants. Can we keep our business afloat, flipping bangers? It needs so much work to do. <laughs> One year ago, we turned our backs on our regular jobs, rented this garage and attempted to carve out a new living by buying and selling cheap cars and made enough money flipping bangers just to return. People dream of giving everything up, but we're doing it for real. And it's scary. We've emptied our pockets again, and this time we have enough to spend 500 to 1,000 pounds on each car. If we want to cover our costs and pay ourselves wages, it's essential we double our return on every pound we put in. And we can only afford five workshop days per car. We've swapped a salary and a wage Possibly for nothing. The workshop is empty and we don't like empty. Enter our cunning plan. Right, so we're both on the same page. We're looking for an Eastern Bloc car, yeah? Yes, definitely are. I love that idea. Because we both know that now is the time to make some money out of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, surely if there's going to be any time to make some money, now should be it. Um, I've been looking around at some images. What you got? There's a lot of really ugly ones. <laughs> you know that one that the Russian police used to use? That's a zil. Yeah, two yeah. straight things, really smoky. We don't want one of those. But there's beautiful ones as well, isn't there? I, I would really like a Lada Neva. I mean, that oh. floats my boat. No, that would be nice. That would be really nice. But I've looked, and they're expensive, and there's none of them for yeah. sale. Well, <clears throat> you know, as we're a bit of a sort of got a bit of a soft spot for the underdog. Yeah. That one that they always used to take the mickey out of. Everybody always used to take the mickey out of them. Yeah, Lada. No, the Skoda. Like that? You're one step ahead of me, aren't well, you? I knew that. Yes, you're going to exactly say. like that. Right. The Estelle. So our carefree plan to bag a Skoda Estelle fast becomes an obsession. And the next day, we head off to check out an orange car that's on bids. And the seller says he will not end the auction under any circumstances. It's currently at £300. Go on then, Gus, remind me why we've had to get up so early to go and see a car that we, we can't take away today because we don't know what the price is. It's a really good 105, but they were called Estelles here. But if we want a Skoda, it's the best one I've seen. And it's a 79 or 80 car, left-hand drives, and it's been brought in by the guy, seems like a complete car nut. He's got lots of cars. It's definitely an import because it's not registered for the road. And we can clearly see that it's left-hand drive in the photograph. Clearly can. <laughs> <laughs> if we can get this car for... So a good one will sell for £2,000. And okay. as we know, when we were looking, there's not many about. No. There's not many about. No, it's a, it's on auction now, which is awkward for us. But... I think people will be clambering over each other to actually get hold of one of these. I think not regardless of what it costs, but this is a must-have car for us. We can do something with it. Yeah. We don't know what's wrong with it. I don't even know if it runs. In actual fact, I don't think it does run. Yeah. But we can see. Um... I have packed the jump pack. Have you? Yes. Excellent. And a battery and some jump leads. Excellent. Because it is a Skoda. There you go. <laughs> there there you, go. you go. You it's had to me say it. Doing you had it. to say it, didn't I, you? I couldn't hold back. The owner, Stuart, is an avid car collector of mostly French cars. So where the Skoda fits in, no idea. This is ours under here. Did you know it was that colour? I did. I knew you'd like that. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go get the van quickly. This is going to be a good day. 
beginning. It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, very exciting. Hello. Stuart, how are you doing? I'm Gus. Pleased Hello, to Gus. meet you. Morning, Stuart. I'm Will. Hi, Will. Will's yeah. very, very excited about the colour well, of your car. So he should be. It's the best colour to have any car in, isn't <laughs> exactly. it? Exactly. <laughs> the old... Um... The big reveal. I'll the take, big I'll, reveal. I'll get this corner. Ooh. 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 <laughs> it's very cool. <laughs> very cool. Oh, oh yes. Brilliant. Well, see, I like the uh, dinosaur ribs on do the you, roof. Yeah, do you like the ventilation system? I thought oh, it was some oh, sort of roof rack that went all the way over. Keep the, keep, keep keep the, the cover damp, off it. Keep yeah. the damp cover off of it. Get a bit of air underneath it. And it's that colour all over. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, isn't it? I really like it. So this is, a, this is a 105, isn't it? Yes. I know they were called Estelle's here, but this is a 105. Yeah, yeah. The really early one. I know it says a lot of bits on the back seat. Shouldn't they be under the bonnets? They're actually for a Renault 4. I'd forgotten they were in there, but, you know. <laughs> oh, well, that's a bonus. So does that mean the engine might be complete, then? The engine is complete. And when did it last run? Well, time tends to stretch a bit when you're thinking of these things, but mm. I'd so... like to say 18 months, but it could be two years. Do you think okay. if, if we had a poke around, we could get it going? Yeah, I think there's a good chance. Well, let's have a look. How do we get in the boot? Right. Right. the... Um... I'll open the boot. Lovely. Um, and there's space in there. Yeah. But no battery. Where's the battery going? Uh, it's behind the back seat. You just okay. tip the back seat forward. It's under the parcel shelf. Perfect. So look, I'll leave you guys to it. If you can get it going, brilliant. Take it for a run. No problems at all. We'll see you later. Thanks, Stuart. Cheers. Brilliant. We're going to need some kiss, aren't we? Yep. Battery, leads, spanners. But coming to see non-running cars is what we do. We were born ready for this moment. I peel back the seats, which are trimmed in a putrid green. The Skoda is short of coolant. All good? Yeah. OK. <laughs> Thanks, Gus. <laughs> and fuel. Two years as a non-runner sounds about right. It's an expensive grip, that one. Put that back on there. Well, at the moment, it's not starting. And it may well be a design classic, but if it's not starting, we're not going to take it home. This is a completely genuine try at a first-time start. Stuart's pal has a farm which we're allowed to drive around on for the price of a supermarket own brand white wine. We don't know anything about the Skoda's brakes, so this is scenic and safe. Ooh. This is proper Czech countryside driving. This car was actually made to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I should be eating cheeses and bolts and carrying, <laughs> carrying a dozen eggs in a basket on my lap. I think that's a TCV. Uh, this is brilliant, isn't it? It's considering we're bouncing around on this dirt track. There's no horrible clonky noises. It's, it's it not was... running very well, I have to say, but mm, it's good. got all that old petrol in it still, hasn't it? It could probably do with a bit of a service. Well, it doesn't sound like the axle's <laughs> hanging out of it, does it? <laughs> it's great. The Skoda can at least scare sheep, so that's a good thing. So steering feels good? Yeah, good. Absolutely fine. Yeah. If, if we could get it to that's actually it. run nicely, rather than having to keep lipping the throttle, which sounds a bit racy, but in actual fact it's just a pain. Yeah. But the suspension's great, isn't it? It's really comfy. <laughs> it's really, really comfy. It's really comfy for. Yeah. It's it feels better, racing. Than, better than your average sort of cheap car, isn't it? This thing's built to last. Even though we only reach 15 miles an hour, we decide to take a punt and see if Stuart is willing to take the £300 that the auction's been sitting at. Well, we never know. He might let it go, mightn't he? Yeah. Well, fingers crossed. Oh, did you want to knock? <laughs> no, go on, you knock. Go on. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> We're back. How'd you get on? <laughs> Great. You got it running. 
was fabulous, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah, it's really good. Yeah, good. fabulous little car. It was. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It feels somehow wrong not taking it home with us after driving it around a field all afternoon. Yeah, I, I, I do know what you mean. It's just with an online sale, I just feel there will be other people watching the auction. You know, maybe they're going to jump in with a bid. Mm. I think the right thing to do is to leave it to run. Okay, so we can't tempt you at all. No, Seems no. Fair. I think that, to yeah. me, it feels like the right thing to do. Okay. Not surprised. But, you know, bid and hopefully you'll win it and then you'll have some fun. It's <laughs> great. Thank yeah. you. Thanks Cheers. very much. Yeah. Cheers, Thanks, both. Joe. All right. And we'll bye hopefully bye. see you again. Not okay. To, not the distant future. Bye now. So we head back with our trailer empty. It's not exactly what we wanted, but it is what we expected. So if we like the car that much, there's only one option, and that's to bid. So the Skoda's not going to make a grand, I can see that, but it's probably going to top 500 quid. I think we need to let the numbers dictate whether it comes into the workshop. £750 is our maximum. Two days later, and our bravery is rewarded with an orange gift. Well, not completely a gift. £620 was the winning bid, and it went our way. But how do we take this old Skoda and build its value to around 2K in only five days? We buy cars that other people might overlook, and our orange Skoda might once have been an unusual choice, but the price of 620 quid is perfect for our workshop today. So we finally got ourselves a Skoda, didn't we? Much maligned, the butt of so many jokes, actually a very cool car. Yeah, I, I get your points on that, but it's fair to argue that we can't just polish this one up and get rid of all these nasty marks yeah. and expect somebody to come waltzing through the door with another thousand pounds for us. You know, we've got to work really, really hard on this. Think smart, think clever, do a good job. Yeah, and I think the, the way that this project's going to go is that we've got to maintain the things about this car that are so good. Well, we need to look at the fuel system, give that a good clean up as well. Go through the mechanicals. Yeah, and then we can sort that interior out, can't we? We'll find a wheel somewhere. Yeah. I, mean, I think perhaps cooler seat covers, those door cards on the C pillars, all secondhand stuff. They're sought after, aren't they? People are looking for them, and there's just not many of them. It's time for some window dressing, and the polystyrene things have to go. We need to sell the Skoda as soon as it's done, so I'm in charge of pickies for our internet auction ad. And then I've got to list it, but how much do I ask? So I've been looking online for uh, cars like our Skoda. Well, ours is an import. Ours is a 105S, which is an import. They were called Estelles here and Super Estelles. Effectively, it's the same thing. But <clears throat> it seems to me that they're going to become a future classic. I mean, maybe not in the five days that we've got, maybe in a couple of years' time, but... They're rare, they're really rare, and people are looking for them, and, and they're difficult to find. They were difficult for, it was difficult for us to find ours. So I would say a good one would get over £2,000. So I'm going to put ours on for a buy it now price of £2,695, which is a bit cheeky, but you've got a dream. A reserve price of £1,800, because if we get that, I'll be happy, and it gives us a profit and a starting price of a pound, just to get things rolling. It's time to get serious and get the Skoda into a place where she transforms from a Skoda into a dream machine, or somewhere halfway. With the car in the air, we get a first look underneath. It can be a bad moment, but I have high hopes. Well, we know we've got a problem with the fuel system, don't we? Yeah, well, it's been on there forever. That's the main problem with it, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Imagine how much crud can collect in a tank in all that time. Yeah, yeah, it's going to yeah. be big, isn't it? It is, yeah, nasty job. So uh, it's all got to come out. Yeah, I guess what we need to do is get all the muck that's in here out. Yeah. And that's, then... that's looking a bit dicky there as well, that tube. Yeah, we could replace that, couldn't we? And then we'll take the pickup pipe off, take it off the carburetor and blow it through, will we? Yeah. Well, this is starting to look like a full service. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be good. I'm going to get a bucket. I'm going to get a spade and a spanner. Ready? 
With our Skoda basically in good nick, the flushing of the fuel system is our first major job. Right now, I need to get rid of the old rotten petrol. Do you remember how much petrol was in it? Yeah, quite a lot more than two buckets, I think. Do you think so? Yeah. Holding it... Uh... See, there's already muck in there. Well, there is, yeah. There's but I think bits. that probably came off, came off the bolt. I'll tell you what, there's not as much muck as I was hoping to find. No. Which is a good Smells thing. Smells though, doesn't it? Yeah, that's really rotten. That's probably more what our problem is, actually, the fact that we've got really stale petrol rather than really dirty petrol. Yeah. But I think, nevertheless, we're going to have a good old look inside the carburetor and see what we find there. Yeah, it could be all sorts of damage, couldn't it? We're going to leave it draining overnight to be sure that all the rotten fluid is gone. We'll go home early and leave it to do its thing. Day two on Mission Skoda. We want to prove that our £620 Skoda Estelle didn't deserve to be the butt of so many jokes all those years ago. And we'll prove it by adding a grand or two to the price of this one. We're in the middle of dealing with the fact that the petrol in it seems to be prehistoric. Oh, it stinks. I wish we hadn't left that overnight. Yeah, that is pretty grossy. I'm going to decant that. I don't blame you. Right, I think if I get started on disconnecting the fuel line at this end, yep. then we're easy. The rest of it's all under the bonnet. Yeah, and then we'll flush it out with a couple of gallons of fresh petrol, shall we? The yep. tank. And this car's going to be like brand new. <laughs> <laughs> A fuel flush isn't rocket science, but there is science. You've got to work through the system and keep an eye out for corrosion and rot and replace as you go. The fuel pump and filter need to come off so I can take a look. So to continue with my obsession with documenting how much muck has come out of this fuel system, I've put my mutton cloth and my funnel over a bucket here. I'm going to blow the pipes up. But before I do that, I just wanted to show that there's a lot of sediment. So this is a, this is a, um, a sediment trap on the, for the carburetor. So this filter goes in here and it sits below the carburetor and it allows the petrol to, or the muck in the petrol to settle down. And it's full of what looks like clay. It's clearly got a lot of, a lot of stuff in it. But I wanted to blow these pipes out as well. There was quite a lot in it, wasn't there? <laughs> so the fuel system is full of sediment in every place we look. I've cleaned the hoses now and replaced the clips and sorted out all the stuff I can get to. Right, so that's all the hoses back on and the filters back in, so I'm just going to flush the tank. I could remove the tank, but I'm worried I'm going to cause more issues by disturbing something in there but I can flush the system through with clean petrol, which is pretty simple. With all that done, Will gets on with his favourite job of bashing the suspension with a hammer. When we were out and about in the car the other day, I noticed though there was a rather annoying noise coming from the front end. The suspension or the steering, I suspect. So I thought, well, come and have a look. And it seems that the steering ball joints look a bit worn and the rubbers are a bit sort of, yeah, they've seen better days. So, you know, I don't think they're going to fail an MOT, but I think that's where the noise is coming from. So I'm going to change those just as a precautionary measure. The ball joints are a common problem in the steering assembly. If they fail, they will creak and knock. But replacement is simple DIY. They unscrew, but just remember how many turns on the old ones. Otherwise, you'll upset the geometry when you put the new units on. Well, there we go. For a job that didn't cost too much in parts or take too long in my time, I've replaced both of the steering ball joints, which is going to make this car feel like it's got tip-top suspension. I'm clearly going to have to do something with that, aren't I? But it's not why I'm here. So this car was brought from Hungary and drives on the, uh, on the opposite side of the road from us. So if you drive this here, it's going to dazzle people. So I'm going to take these out and put in some right-hand drive ones, which I have purchased.
Now this is the tricky bit because obviously this is made of plastic which is 30 years old and is clearly going to oh, not break as I take it off. Everything on this car has to be cheap and the aftermarket lights are just £18. Well, theoretically, it should twist now and that should come off. Like it does. This is me understanding Czechoslovakian engineering. Same as everyone else's, really. There we go, so we just swap this over. So here's our new headlight. So that's good, that goes in there. So you can see this one comes out this side, R1 comes out this side. Perfect. It's going to fit straight on. So this is a universal fitting, these three prongs. So this is the old bulb. The only thing you've got to remember is not to touch the filament of the old bulb because it'll, you'll end up blowing it. Um, so this one clips in rather than the other one screwed, had a screw retaining it. So this one just clips in as all sort of European ones do. And then this rubber goes over the top there. <laughs> it's got top written on it, which is handy. And then side light just slides in, fits in there, friction fit, which is nice. And then the I'll tell you what, let's take that out. Then you can see that going on in there. So they go in, that's it. And then that's on. Slide the side light in. And the headlight goes on. And then the retaining ring, I've had to, goes on like that. And then just spins around and then you've got to tighten the screws up. I took one of the screws out to see if I could replace it and lost it on the floor, but I did actually find a replacement, which is rather neat. So these can all just be done up now. We've got new lights, so we can drive the car without dazzling other drivers. Of course, they may be dazzled by its curb appeal, but we'll need to see how she turns out. <laughs> Day three, we buy cars that nobody else seems to want. This Skoda is certainly a love it or hate it kind of vehicle. At only 620 quid, we liked it enough to buy it, and now we're working through its issues, such as driving rather badly. And now it's time to tackle the awful paintwork. The glue from the tape, from where these were taped onto the car, all the way over and it's made a real mess. It's taking a lot of cleaning off. But it's coming off well, and when it's all off, it will polish up really, really nicely. The thing is, we're not really doing much to the Skoda, just fighting fires, and we've yet to get to the point where we can move it on. I'd like to do some sort of forensics on this to find out where this has been stored. I reckon somewhere where the squirrels lived, by the looks of it. Hopefully not rats. I'm going to hoover it out and then I'm going to fix that pump. Oh, no, I thought I was going to get that job. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you, you, I thought you were sorting out up there. That's the only reason I'm doing bored it. of sorting out this stuff <laughs> up here. It's really, really long-winded, boring, and it's no fun. You've got the best job, definitely. Yeah, well, I'll do that and I'll come and help you. That could take you hours. <laughs> Will might take hours as he hates cleaning so much. It's actually quite manageable and soon put to bed, and I can move on to the next task. So this is our old pump in here, um, and it's not working. I'm just going to connect this to earth here and put this tester onto it. So although it's not working, it's got power going to it. So all I'm going to do is put a new motor on, and that should work. A faulty motor for a windscreen washer isn't serious, but it's annoying. A generic motor replacement is only £10. Woohoo! Squirty. 
While Gus stays busy, I'm sloping off for a break, and I'm also hoping to find a way to make the Skoda look way cooler, but for very little money. We've got a bit of a sticky problem with our Skoda. That tape has left a horrible mark. Now, I could paint the roof, but that's not cheap and it's not quick. So I'm going to do something which has never been done to a Skoda, probably. And the answer is to vinyl the roof. Ah. Hi there. Oh yeah. how can I help? Oh, well, um, so, it's like this. We've got an old Skoda, yeah. which we'd like to jazz up a little bit, maybe put a vinyl roof on it. OK. And um, I was sort of wondering if you'd have something available. Yeah, we've got several films. And um, what sort of finish are you after? Is it a well, standard colour or are you after a brushed effect? Mm, well, a bit of both, really. Come on through. Wow, this is pretty impressive in here. Yeah, there's a big range. There's uh, a lot available. Some, there's some great colours in there. Yeah, so like so, I said, there's brushed effect films, there's metallics, there's matte finishes, there's gloss finishes. We yeah. do do leathers as well, they're over there, but okay. all of these are suitable for vehicle wrapping. So basically, vinyl is the material of the past and plastic wrap is the material of the future. But nowadays, you can texture it to look like old-fashioned vinyl. So we've got burgundy. Yeah, black that's going to clash cream. with uh, that's going to clash with the colour of the car because the car's the same colour as my hair. Oh right, okay. So it's going to clash a little bit, isn't it? Which is a pity. Cream, not so on. We're going to have to. We're just going to have to be boring and go for one of the. Um, go for the black. Go for the black. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Well, <laughs> that really does. That's heavy, isn't yeah, it? It is. They're heavy rolls. It's thick material. Yeah, it's good stuff. Now you know what I've done. I've not measured up. Guesstimate. Yeah, okay. it's going to have to be, isn't it? What are you thinking? Two and a half metres. By the metre, so we'll go for three. <laughs> OK. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we cuss it, then? We'll take it through to the warehouse and do get it sorted for you. Do you want me to carry it? That would be brilliant, thank you. <laughs> You're right with that. Yeah, it's yeah. quite heavy, though, isn't it? They are heavy, yeah. The three metre length cost me 50 quid. Hopefully, it'll give me the coolness of vinyl, but be far easier to fit. The question now is whether our cleaning and cutting of the paint is enough to get the car to £2,000. But that's an issue for another day. We are off for a pint. Day four. Skodas are a deeply misunderstood car, and that's exactly why we brought this orange 410 into the workshop. It only owes us 700 quid so far. Wow. That is looking great, isn't it? It was so much better for a polish, doesn't it? Getting all those greasy marks off it. Yeah, almost there. There's still more to do. Well, we got the vinyl. Yes, we? yeah. So we could do it together, because that's sort of a two-man job, isn't yeah, it? That'd be a good job, but we've got the old bumpers and wheels, haven't we? Yeah, it's a shame about those bumpers, isn't it? I'd like to get those in chrome again, but they're very, very difficult to find, so I think they're going to end up in black, aren't they? Yeah, they are. So I might straighten that one out and do that. I'll take these wheels on, see what we can do with those, see if we can't zhuzh them up a little. Yeah. Good, good yeah, day. Excellent. To prepare the bumper for work, I remove the cable tie holding it together. Such a shame that these aren't chrome anymore. They really set the car off when they're chrome, but this one's seen better days. So I'm going to repaint it satin black, but I've got to get all this old black off, which is really thick. Uh, so I'm going to have to take it all the way back down to the metal. Then I use a DA to take off the rest of the paint. I'm also in the stripping business, trying to get these wheels back to bare metal before giving them a lick of paint. And I'm looking at the bumper now and I'm having a complete change of mind. Well, the jury's out now, isn't it? Because I've taken all the paint off the bumper. I was only going to rub it down to repaint it. But actual fact, if you've got a knack of chrome bumper, the thing to do is paint it black. Well. Are looking at this and I love it. It lifts the front of the car and it's how the front of the car should have looked. I think I'm gonna lacquer it and leave it like it is. The wheels are coming up nicely too. I'm giving our Skoda wheels a bit of a clean up because uh, they really need it 
and respraying them. But the silver that they were in was really boring and dull and just needed a bit of modernisation. So a nice classic grey should do the trick. While I mask up the front of the car so I can lacquer up the bumper, small jobs, small jobs, but lovely jobs to do, and they make a difference. But now it's the biggie. We want to give the Skoda a cheap visual lift, and wrapping the roof, we think, is the answer to it. It also covers up many scabs of paint. That is brilliant, isn't it? Nice, eh? Really nice, yeah. Proper leatherette-type feel about it as well. It's going to turn our 105S into a 105 GLS, isn't it? Hmm, yeah, I reckon. Make it look so super posh. Yeah. I um I bought my hair drying from home. Mm, handy. What does that say? Can you see it? Uh that says 1.6. Okay. Good over that. The roof trim clips off. And then we cut and manoeuvre an oversized panel into place. Yeah, it's like a manta ray. It's beautiful. And the thing that usually catches us out follows. We peel the backing off, remove the air bubbles, and work backwards to keep it consistent. Our wraps aren't always good, but this time we've got it nailed. Well, it looks great, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks absolutely fabulous. We've done a really great job. It looks the mutts. The only problem is we haven't actually covered up the bit that we meant to cover up. That was the whole intention in the first place, wasn't it, to yeah. cover that bit? But I'm, I'm feeling slightly dubious now because, you know, <clears throat> where do we put the line? Yeah, I, do... I, I don't know. No. I don't know. I think, it, I think we either leave it like that, which we clearly can't do, can we? No, we've got to do something. So, I, and this might be controversial, but I think we should come to here. You know, my thought on that is that it looked like the sort of 70s car with a welly boot on it. Yeah. I've had several thoughts. One of them is that we just follow this top line along yep. and then follow it down the back of the window and just put a skinny one on there. Mm -hmm. And we get this wonderful orange sort of like tick shape coming up into the car, yep. which, is, which is good. And then I came up with the cheats, do it in no time at all method, and that's just put a black strip along the top and finish it back here in this corner. Yeah. Both of which are both of which are available. All three of us, in actual fact. Yeah. And and to be fair, you never see you never see both sides together. So we could we could do we could do one on this. This side could be my other. side. <laughs> I don't no. know. I don't know what the answer to that is. I think I, I, I just think traditionally, if if it's going to look because these contours will look lovely in this. Yes. Won't they? Because they catch yeah. the light so beautifully. But I get what you're saying with the sort of. Start I've got, I've got a solution. Let's go for gold. And if we can't achieve it, we'll pull back to something that's a little bit more achievable. That's a really good idea, actually, yeah. yeah. So Will gracefully accepts that his ideas aren't going to work and that we should do what was obvious all along, and that's wrap all the way to the bottom of the roof line. Was it the right decision? Of course it was. And now the new wheels go back on. And the masking paper comes off. That looks amazing, doesn't it? I'm so pleased with how it's turning out. It looks it's like just, a different car. It's, it's great. It's absolutely amazing. I'm so happy. So interior tomorrow. Yeah, seat covers and mm, a few other knickknacks in there. Seat pillars, yeah. This has been a wonderful day, and if there was any doubt we could pull the Skoda up a few notches without spending a lot of money, well, here's the proof. We buy cars that no one else wants, but people would be mad not to want this. An imported 70s Skoda. We've got it running and got it looking better, but now the interior is in dire need of attention. And that means we need a new steering wheel because the old one is cracked in several places. 
Parts for our Skodas are really difficult to come by, so if you hear of somebody who's got lots in a muse, you're going to go and have a look, but it looks like I might be in the wrong place. There is a distinct whiff of MG about this garage in Kilburn. Hi, Robert. Is it? Yes. Hi, Gus. How are you? I'm good. I was I'm expecting good. to see piles of Skoda bits. I've got some S-type parts and some Estelle parts upstairs. Go on and have a look, Gus. I really do. Come on up. I really do. I want to have a rummage around. OK. It turns out that Robert's dad used to own a Skoda garage and has what's left of his parts collection. There's a proper treasure trove up here. There's a steering wheel there. <laughs> There's one there. Oh, hang on. There's another steering wheel up there. Chrome bezeled instruments. Brand new, unused chrome bezeled instruments, still with a sticker on. Apart from the wheel, I don't really know what I want, but I'll know what I want when I see it. Rob. There's a, there's a few things here that I can't do without. I'm not okay. saying that it's all the things we're going to need, but I can talk to you about other things. Sure. We definitely need a steering wheel. We don't need a column, but I can take the steering wheel off the column and send the column back. Fine, OK. Um, we will definitely need a distributor, and we'll definitely need an oil filter. I can't, I can't live without those. No. I love them. OK, that's fine. And these parts return labels. <laughs> They're just brilliant. Have them as a souvenir of your visit. And I, I definitely want my uh, Tommy Mackinnon yeah. poster. OK. And I can't live without these either. I no, love them. I just love them. I want to show them to Will. Yeah. Um, so what do you think for the lot? How does 100 quid grab you? <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Online, these parts should be at <laughs> least £200, so Robert's done me a real favour. Back at the workshop, Will is feeling the pressure. I'm just having a look at the advert for our Skoda. And people are starting to look at the advert and ask questions. They're asking, is it road legal? Well, the fact of the matter is, is no, it's not road legal, but we have done all of the paperwork off, and if we can rely on their system, they'll get that lot done, and hopefully it'll be back with us before our advert is finished, because otherwise people are going to be a little bit upset. While I wait for Gus to get back, I'm going to get busy inside. I want to get these crusty sea pillars out. I get the impression something has died behind them and replacements are impossible to find. These are the covers from our sea pillars in our car. Now, I don't have the materials that I need to fix it, as in I don't have any of this nice white vinyl, I don't have any of this foam here, but I do have other things, so this is going to be definitely, very definitely, which I cut out of foam that we use to make a roof lining from, a bit of mounting glue, and you've guessed it, some black wrap. I allow a fold to go over the edges so it'll snug up to the corners. Peel off the backing and see what we've got. Oh dear. Well, I've mended it. Trouble is, it looks a bit rough, and I think I'm just going to have to make do with that. So I'm just going to hoover up the rest, and um, hopefully that'll be all right. This isn't exactly what the doctor ordered, but we're on the last day, and I've got to get all the other big stuff done, and maybe I'll have another go at these later. While I get cleaning, Gus gets serious with the wheel. I might have been a bit foolish when I bought this steering wheel because actually this steering wheel is off of a car that's much older than ours. And I don't know if it's going to fit. What I should have done is taken the steering wheel off of our car and taking it up, but I didn't. So what I'm gonna do is take this off, take that one off, see if I can get them to fit. My first problem is my biggest spanner doesn't fit the nut. For there is the nut that takes it off. So first problem. So an adjustable spanner is the answer, and soon we're back in the game. So 
So I've taken the wheel off of our car and taken it to the bench, and I have here the wheel from the bench which I have brought down to fit on. And there's rather typically some good news and some bad news. The good news is that the Czechoslovakian driving simulator experience still works. The bad news is that the wheel doesn't actually fit um, because Skoda, in their infinite wisdom, have changed how steering wheels were fitted between the manufacturer of this wheel and the manufacturer of our car. But the spline fits, which is actually the good news. So what I was thinking was I would cut this off here, cut this old thread off, because that's how the, this wheel was held on to the column. So I'll cut this off here, and hopefully it'll fit over the spline and I can bolt it on um, like the old wheel, like this wheel, where the old wheel was actually fitted. So I've got nothing to lose, so I'm just going to give it a go. So I mark the cutting point and reinforce the line with tape. I do the cut with a saw, not a grinder, for greater accuracy. It's perfect. But what's not perfect are these green seat covers. They've got to go. So Will went online and chose some leopard skin replacements. He said they'd jazz up the interior. Not everyone likes jazz, but they were 20 pounds, so they get the job. And that's it, the Skoda is done. We flushed and overhauled the fuel system, which cost us 20 pounds. We wrapped the roof, painted the wheels and stripped and lacquered the bumpers for 50 pounds. And we sorted out the interior with 120 pounds spent. Not bad, the Skoda owes us only 850 pounds. Well, happy, not happy? Really happy. And I think it was a particular challenge for us, wasn't it? Because actually, there wasn't a lot wrong with the car, was there? The car looks really good, it drives pretty well, and it happens to be a bit of a design classic as well. And I'm starting to get the feeling that, you know, if I had a bit more space and maybe a little bit more money, <laughs> I uh, might want to buy this one myself and just sit on it for a couple of years. It's a very cool car. Isn't it? So she's cool, but how does she go? The Skoda is road legal, but for its first proper drive in years, we want to go somewhere a bit different in the rain. Well, this is pretty exciting, I reckon. Yeah. This old bird out on the road. So go on then, tell us a Skoda joke. I will not tell you a Skoda joke for two reasons. One, the Skoda joke was over 30 years ago. Mm. And so, I know. And secondly, this little car doesn't deserve it. You know, not then and not now. No, I, the, the, the joke is firmly on the other foot, if indeed that can be a thing. Because we bought this car for 600 quid, didn't we? And yeah. it's uber cool, isn't it? It is, yeah. Well, let's talk about the car. The fact that it's running really well, driving really well, and it's a fantastically pure car. It's right up my street because it's a glass box on top of a metal box yeah. with an engine at the back and some dials to tell you what's going on. There's no in-car entertainment system. There's no stereo. There's no sat nav. There's not even a bag lighter to distract <laughs> you, is there? <laughs> Nothing. It's just pure car. It's what we should all be driving. Well, you've got to have a bit of a sense of humour, haven't you? Talking about how did the auction go? Ah. Well, the auction's finished and it didn't meet as reserve. Oh, <laughs> well, well, that's perfect then. Yeah, yeah, just right. But there is some good news. The highest bidder is still interested and plans to come and have a look. This is very, very much a fingers crossed moment. Yeah, I agree. The next day, with the weather a little better, John turns up as promised. His offer topped out at 1,360, but only if the car measures up. John. Hello. Hi. I'm Gus. Pleased to meet Hi, you. Hi, pleased to meet you. Hi, John. Hi. I'm Will. Good day to you. I'm so glad you've come down, because we were both rather worried. We're very concerned about this little car, and we were worried that whoever was bidding on it would not understand this car. But the mere fact that you're here shows an intent and an understanding of them. Yeah, um, I do like these cars. I, I grew up with a couple of them when I was a student, ah. and, you know, I had good memories of them. 
Um, so yeah, I, I think they're uh, an undervalued, undervalued car, and uh, yeah, I do appreciate them. I can see the good points, and those people that used to rib me about them, uh, you know, they've missed out on this uh, appreciating these kind of cars. Well, it's funny you say that because those people that used to take the Mickey out of you and out of other people, well, the laugh's on them now, isn't it? Because you're happy to pay thirteen sixty for this car. Um, this car, you know, it's a, that's an average price for them at the moment, but this car's on the up and up, and they, it's going to be worth more in a year's time. So, you yeah, know, certainly hope so. You've got the Thank last you. laugh, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, let's hope. Thanks, thanks John. Thanks, thanks for much. coming down. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. So, we didn't double our money, but this is a long way from being a sad story. We've cleared more than 500 quid, and the car only cost six, and we got to own a Skoda 105S.